Your meeting transcripts might be the most valuable data that you're ignoring. There is a method I've been using with my clients and also with myself that turns every recorded call into deliverables, such as follow-up emails, SOPs, and sales feedback, and tons and tons of other things. And you get it in seconds instead of hours. So let me show you the five ways I do exactly that. So let's get into it. All right. So this is the reality of the situation that I see with most people that I work with. Most people, sadly, aren't recording their meetings at all or recording any types of things that could be useful for AI in the future. Next, there's a small percentage of people that are recording things, but very rarely do I see them using it effectively. And then finally, there's a small subset of people that are extracting real value from these recordings, not just for summarizing meetings, but many other variables that help you create more leverage in the business. And what do I mean by leverage? Well, with one transcript or multiple transcripts, you can get a lot of stuff from that that you can leverage in the future. So this is just a small example where one transcript can become a follow-up email consistently for reoccurring meetings. It can become an SOP that you then delegate that task to other people and or another AI. You can get feedback on sales, coaching, negotiation, management, et cetera. You can get product insights on what works with your clients and not. And there's a variety of other things that I've done with clients when it comes to getting the most out of these valuable assets. And let's start with the first use case, which is also the most obvious for most people, which is utilizing transcripts to summarize meetings, but not just to summarize them, but to summarize them in the tone and the structure and the format that you care about. Because many of the platforms that you use today, such as Zoom, Teams, Hangouts, etc., they all have generic summarizers included in them. And they also all record the meetings for you as well. So that's the first thing you need to do is just turn on your meeting recordings and start recording all your meetings. Once you get the transcripts from them, you don't necessarily have to default to what their format is and what their priorities are because you have very specific priorities for every meeting that you have, either reoccurring or ad hoc. You may have a certain format that you care about and a certain structure. So you can bake that into an AI that you use, such as ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini, with that transcript. And the easiest way to start and the method I usually recommend people start with is creating projects. So if you're using Claude, it's called a project. If you're using ChatGPT, it's called a project, not GPT. It's a project. And then if you're using Gemini, it's called a gem. All of these do the same thing. They basically allow you to create a prompt that the AI looks at before it ever interacts with you or anything you give it. So in that prompt, we can basically solidify exactly what the structure of the follow-up email should be for a meeting that we just had, the areas of emphasis for that email. So if you want to emphasize on certain projects priorities, uh, you can structure the priorities based off of person. You can set action items to it. Basically, you give the system prompt to the AI talking about the format, the structure, and the tone that you care about when it comes to the types of emails you draft after meetings. Once you've created this, this may take you 10 to 15 minutes, but once you've done this, every single time in the future when you have that same exact type of meeting, all you have to do is drop in the transcript and in 30 seconds or less, you're gonna get back exactly what you need so you can copy and paste that either in an email that you send to people or put it inside of some sort of internal wiki that your employees look at. Quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me, as always. So two quick things. First off, below is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox so you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, below are a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us, such as a private community and or one-on-one -on -one coaching. So with that being said, let's get back into the video. And one interesting thing I've noticed, both with myself and also my clients that adopted this behavior of recording everything and utilizing for this specific use case, is that when they have meetings, two things happen. One is when they take notes, they're not just taking notes to reference in the future, but the only type of notes they take in the meeting are to direct the conversation. So I'm taking notes to ask follow-on questions or figuring out a direction I wanna take the conversation. I'm not necessarily taking notes for future reference. And the second thing that I've noticed is that the way that you behave in the meeting slightly changes. Because you know that this transcript is going to be used by AI in the future, it's important that things are stated clearly. So if the client shares something with you and you're slightly unsure of what they meant, you then reinstate it back to them to ensure you understand it, which is a good practice in general. But when you do the reinstatement and the client agrees, that reinstated point is then solidified in the transcript for the AI to then reference in the future. So those are two muscle memory and behavioral shifts that occur when you start doing this more often. And that's our first use case. And the second use case is around giving feedback to your team. So the way this manifests is in many different ways, depending on the meeting type. I just wanted to give you four examples where I've seen people get a lot of benefit from. The first category here is sales. So either you're doing the sale or your employee's doing the sale. Either way, there's probably some sort of criteria that you use to judge if it was a good discovery call or a bad discovery call. In addition to this, you also have consulting. So maybe you already have a client and you have a team that's focused on customer success or you have teams that just deliver different types of advice to the client, such as support or elsewhere. And what that makes that engagement successful, you probably have certain deliverables that matter. Again, you can judge their performance and give them feedback based off that criteria. 
The next one here is coaching. So this can come down to managers coaching their employees. So maybe there's a certain type of expectation you have for your management in one-on-ones, and you could then have AI assist in the process of improving their ability to coach, giving them feedback afterwards. And then finally is negotiations. So maybe you're going through a negotiation and you can take not just the transcript from the meetings, but also email threads, et cetera, to get assistance in the process of figuring out how to best negotiate your part of the deal. And these are just some examples. And really quick, what is a rubric? Because this is often a question that I get from people in the comments. And a rubric is basically a scoring criteria that we're going to put inside of the system prompt for the AI so it can judge you on that. So this is an example for sales calls. So these are some questions that the AI would want to ask itself when assessing the transcript. So were there good discovery questions asked? Did they listen more than they talked? Did they address objections effectively? Did they end on with clear next steps? And the beautiful part about this is that you have a coach on demand that costs very little. And maybe some of you don't necessarily have a rubric that you can use to judge yourself on certain types of things, because maybe you're a solo entrepreneur, but you have certain types of people you look up to that are experts in that space. So what you can do is you can take their books, their podcast interviews and YouTube videos, and you can consolidate that into a system prompt as well as a knowledge base for a GPT project, cloud project, or Gemini Gem. And then you can have that specific persona grade you and judge you on what they say or deem is good when it comes to sales or whatever use case you're doing when it comes to judging yourself based on a transcript. Now let's move on to our third use case, which is turning training calls into SOPs and then improving that with a reverse AI interview, all of which is derived from the transcript. And this is the basic flow. So let's assume that you're having a call with a new employee and you're training them on a specific process. You need to record this. This needs to be recorded. So once you've recorded it, you then get the transcript. After you got the transcript, you're gonna pass this to an AI and you're gonna ask that AI to generate a detailed SOP for a new person to take over that process for you. Once you get this, this SOP could be good and you might be able to move forward and not have to do the next step. But sometimes this SOP not, might not be detailed enough because in this training, there weren't enough questions associated to subtleties, nuances, or edge cases that were brought up. And if you wanna bring those up and include them in the SOP, you can run through this optional step, which is the reverse interview. And what's gonna happen in the reverse interview, the way you wanna set this up is you'll start a new conversation with ChatGPT, Cloud, or Gemini, and you'll basically give it a prompt like this. I want you to ask me one question at a time. Every answer I provide should inform the next question that you ask. The intent of this conversation is for us to get as much nuance and subtlety and edge cases out of my head on a very specific process, and then put that into a, a final uh, SOP. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide you an SOP, and we're gonna start that conversation. That's basically all you need to do in the prompt. And you could do it through dictation like I just did right here. And the interview looks something like this, where you have the AI asking a question, you give it an answer. Question, answer. At the very end, you have a complete SOP with those edge cases captured. Once you have this finalized SOP, you can pass it off to your new employees to delegate that task to them. That's training in SOPs. Let's move on to the next use case, which is automated client follow-up. Now, this is something that I use heavily. Reason being is that I have a lot of recurring meetings with clients, and these are AI coaching sessions. Each session is usually structured the same way. The topics change and the projects change, but the structure is similar. So I, I completely automate the pre and post work for any meeting that I have that's reoccurring like this. And it saved me a ton of time. In the past, it used to take me between 40, 45 minutes to an hour to do pre and post work, but now it's less than two minutes. And the way that I do this is I have an AI set up where it's going to be actually a Claude project. And this Claude project is going to be inside of the desktop app on my computer. And that's very specific. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a series of MCPs or connectors connected to this AI in this project that it calls and uses to do the process for me. Now, what I'll do is I'll drop in the transcript to this cloud project. It's gonna first go off to my Google Calendar and check who attended the meeting. After it's checked that, it's gonna then draft an email follow-up following a very specific structure, tone, the way I like to emphasize my follow-ups. And it's gonna draft that and put it inside of a Gmail draft for me so I can reference it before I send it. And then also, it's gonna go off and update my CRM stating that that meeting happened, here's some of the wins associated, and here's the tasks that, that were completed. All of this happens in just a few minutes. And all I have to do is review this follow-up email, make some minor edits and push send. So if you have any reoccurring meetings, you likely should be using the AI for this specific task to save yourself tons and tons of time. Our fifth use case is around building an objection playbook. So this specific example is talking about objections in relation to prospects that you're selling. But you can apply this to a variety of other examples. This is just one example. Now in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an AI and it's gonna take in the transcripts after every single meeting that we have with a prospect in a discovery call. You'll take the transcript, you'll pass it to the AI, and that AI is going to extract out all the objections from that meeting. And you're gonna take each one of those objections that have been extracted from the transcript and you're gonna put them into probably a Google Sheet or some sort of database. So it could be even Airtable or something like that. 
Now, the important thing here is you're going to want to use, like I mentioned previously, a cloud project using the desktop application because they're the only one that currently has these data connectors that can connect to these tools and write to them. Because ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude all in the web browser and in the desktop, they don't allow you to write to things, meaning you can't change stuff. It only allows it to read. And we want to write, we want to make changes. So we're going to use Claude desktop projects to do this. And we're going to have the AI add all those objections to those Google Sheet and Airtable instances so we can track them over time and look at them in the future. And over time, we could have in week one, maybe 12 objections. And the first total month, 47 objections. And the first three months, 150. This turns into a treasure trove because we can use all this data to do a variety of things. And these are just a few things we can do with this data set. First off, we can train new hires to get better at getting past objections that are based in reality. These are not guesswork, but real things that we've seen in the past and they'll likely see in the future. We can add those objections into the website in the FAQ section where we're going to pre-answer any objections that we're likely going to face by prospects ahead of time. And then finally, if we need to, we can adjust the positioning of our offer to increase the probability that those prospects will say yes to the offer based off of the objection we've got in the past. And again, this is not guesswork. This is based on reality because this is the data set that we've collected over time through real conversations. Now, I'm sure many of you may be concerned about privacy. So what if people don't want us to record the meetings? I can promise you I've recorded hundreds of meetings and most of the time people say yes. Sometimes people say no, but it's very rare. And all you have to do honestly is just to ask, hey, can I record this? Very rarely do you need to give justification. If you want justification, one little sentence that I've used quite often that works quite well is basically stating that, hey, I'm gonna record this meeting so I can focus completely on our conversation. I wanna create a better follow-up for you, and I also wanna stay accountable for myself. I then even recommend that you probably should start doing the same for your meetings. Are you cool with me recording this? And by stating it like that in a very informal and simple way, almost nobody ever says no to me. So don't get hung up on the privacy concerns. And how do you get started with this? Well, I wanted to give you three very specific things I want you to do this week. So the first thing is turn on your transcriptions. So if you're not recording meetings yet, make sure you're recording the meetings and also make sure you have the feature of transcription turned on. Sometimes when you record meetings on some of these tools like Zoom, Hangout, and Teams, they may have the recording of the, the meeting, but they might not have the transcript. So make sure you have the transcription feature turned on. After you've gotten this habit down and you've done it for at least two weeks straight, I want you to create one dedicated AI project, either in GPT, Claude, or Gemini, and start using that specific project consistently for meetings that you're having. And finally, I want you to save those transcripts that you're recording in an organized fashion, because I promise you that future you will thank you for doing that. Because the more data that you've aggregated over time, the more leverage you're going to create within your business because you can use AI with that data. And that's everything. So as a recap, these are the five areas that I've seen people get the most benefit from when it comes to transcription data from meetings. The first and easiest place to start is just meeting recaps, but not just any meeting recap, a very personalized meeting recap that you care about that's structured in a way that you like, the tone, et cetera. After that, we have giving feedback to your team in a variety of areas, such as sales, negotiations, et cetera. Then we have trainings and SOPs. So you can take those meetings and turn them into SOPs. And if you want to take it a step further, you can do the reverse AA interview. After that, we have auto follow-up. And this is something, again, that I use quite a lot because I have recurring meetings. So if you have a recurring meeting and there are multiple steps that have to happen afterwards, such as sending a follow-up email, updating a CRM, et cetera, you need to set up a project that allows you to do that automatically to save yourself tons and tons of time, probably hours a week. And then finally, we have building a playbook of data sets that you can use both for your product, for your team's training, for all types of reasons. In this case, we're talking about objections for prospects, but this can be applied to product feedback and a variety of other areas. And the very first thing that you need to start right now is start recording as much as possible so you have that data in the future to use with your AI projects. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please reshare it with your friends. And as a reminder, two quick things. First off, Blow is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, blow a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. Now, I kept saying create a project or a gem with a system prompt throughout this entire video, but I never actually showed you how to build one. So I made a video that breaks it all down step by step with real examples, as well as the exact system prompts I use. It's all right here. So you should check out that video. Go ahead, click that video. I'll see you next time, internet.